this is to talk about the HPO axis. For some reason, this has always given me a little bit more um, trouble than other axes, like the HPA axis. By HPO axis, I mean hypothalamus, pituitary, um, ovarian axis. But I think if we go through, um, in this video, the follicular phase, in another video, um, the luteal phase, both in the case of with pregnancy and without pregnancy, and then if you can match that up with um, what's happening in terms of histology in the with ovarian follicles and also changes going on in the um, uterus, you should have a pretty good understanding of this. And there really isn't all all that much to know. So here's our follicular phase diagram. Looking at the earlier early part of this, here we got the hypothalamus releasing um, GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone to the pituitary gland, which causes the release of gonadotropin. So that's LH and FSH coming from the anterior pituitary. So like always with pituitary, if you have to know what's releasing what, just remember what's coming from the posterior because there's only two of them. That's the oxytocin and the ADH. So if it's not oxytocin or ADH, then you know it's coming from the anterior pituitary. So these anterior pituitary gonadotropins go to their respective cells in the ovary, LH, working mainly on the theca cell and the FSH on the granulosa cell um, to cause their effects. And since we're in the follicular phase, what's, what's going on here, the whole sort of point of this is the first um, 14 days of the cycle and the, the idea is to get ready for ovulation so there's sort of two things that has to happen one is preparing um, one ovarian follicle developing it to mature it so that it can ovulate and the other part is getting um, the myometrium and endometrium ready um, for ovulation and the important hormones here the, the main one is estrogen in the follicular phase and also FSH and so you've you've probably seen diagram something like what I'm drawing here with all these hormones, the LH, FSH, estrogen, and all those things in, in the follicular phase and the, the luteal phase. And so just looking here at the first part, the follicular phase, what happens is you have a little bit of a bump in FSH going on and you have this sort of steady rise in estrogen as it's being made um, here from the granulose cell as you can see. And then when the estrogen production reaches um, its max up here at the top, it's not really going to go any higher it has sort of a change on the upstream um, impacts. So normally estrogen as a normal type of negative feedback mechanism on the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. Um, but once it gets to above a certain level, it changes and it actually has this sort of positive um, type of feedback and that leads to what's called the LH surge. So the LH hasn't really um, been doing much along here, it's just been kind of hanging out. And then once estrogen peaks, the the LH and the FSH both increase because the estrogen, instead of being inhibitory towards this pituitary um, and hypothalamus release of their hormones, it actually stimulates them. So then we have the LH and the FSH do their um, little surge, and that's how you know that you're getting um, right, right to ovulation. So we should be able to see that um, here in the in the graph. So we have the the change; it becomes starts um, stimulating. Then we have the LH uh, LH surge, and that's how we know. Um, we're getting to the end of the follicular phase and the ready for ovulation and luteal phase. So that's the end of this video. Watch the follicular, I mean, watch the um, luteal phase and the histology stuff about the changes going on there, and you should have a pretty good idea um, about how this works. So just as a recap, we got the FSH working on the granulosa cell, making estrogen with the enzyme aromatase. All those are pretty much just have to memorize those. The granulosa cell also makes the inhibin, which um, feeds back in a negative manner. The LH works on the theca cell, makes more, an, more makes more androgen to get transferred over to the granulosa cell and to go along in this process of making lots of estrogen. Then you just have to know that the high estrogen, the peak estrogen, um, is what precedes the LH and the FSH surge, and it has this changed upstream um, behavior to, to cause the surge. And then you know you're at the time of ovulation once you get to there. So I think that's, that covers everything, and that's the end of this video.